Almighty Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of your word, for your spirit who caused it to be written and who causes our ears and hearts to be open to its message. Amen. His name is Malchus, this man whose ear is severed by the always overachieving Peter. He appears in each of the four Gospels, but only in this reference to this one specific incident in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then it's only John who mentions him by name, Melchus. We know him to be the servant of the high priest, but we're not really sure exactly what the term servant here means. It's most likely that he's the assistant to the high priest. He is the chief of staff to the high priest. He's the right-hand man for the high priest, which means that he functions in the temple. It's an important position. And we find here that that's the plans unfold for the arrest of Jesus in the dark of that garden, Malchus must have been playing some kind of important part because he's close to the action. He's at the front lines. And so when the crowd comes to capture Jesus with their clubs and their swords, he's, he's not in the back row. He's in the front line. And he's close enough to receive a blow from the fisherman's knife. Oh yeah, in a few hours, this Peter is going to cower at the questions of a young servant girl. But now he's bold. And he goes for the head. And perhaps Malchus dodges the assault and renders his right ear open to the attack. And so Malchus has a problem. Yeah, a physical problem. Profuse bleeding. He'll be the disfigured one now as he walks down the street. People will point and people will talk. He looks different. But it's a deeper problem. It's a spiritual problem. Yes, he's, he's disfigured But the problem here is that disfigured people, according to Levitical law, cannot enter the temple anymore. So in this single blow, this man's service is obviously ended. His ear is cut off, but he is cut off. He is cut off from the privilege of being in the temple of the Lord, from the privilege of being in service to the high priest. But there's another another servant in this account. His name is Jesus. And this is the servant of the Heavenly Father. This is the one who is the plan of salvation put into action even before the foundations of the earth were set in place. This is the perfect servant in in every term, in every meaning of the word. In this servant... There is no blemish, there is no fault, there is no failure, there is no sin. This is the perfect one. The God who has come from heaven to take on not only our flesh, but our sin and our iniquity. He comes into a sin-stained world so that he can rescue broken and disfigured souls who have been cut off from the Heavenly Father. And surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And yet we, we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And so nailed to the cross, suspended between heaven and earth, cut off from both God and man, He becomes the sacrifice. And as an earless Malchus is separated from the temple, so the stricken Jesus is separated from the Heavenly Father and he literally experiences hell on the cross for us. 
He receives our punishment. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. And we all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He has become the one who was cut off. And yet there are more servants in this account. You and I are in this account. So just as Jesus restores the severed ear of Malchus, making him whole, Jesus restores our broken souls, making us whole through the gift of sin forgiven. It is through his suffering and death, it is through his cuts and wounds that we are renewed and restored. We are reclaimed for service. And now we, the ones who were served by Jesus, we become the servants. The name Malchus is probably one of the least known biblical names. I don't know about you, I've never run across anyone who was named after Malchus. I know a lot of Marys and Josephs, some Daniels. I even own an Elizabeth and a Sarah. I don't know anyone named Malchus. But there's really good reason why John mentioned him in his gospel, and it's probably that this Malchus, this healed and restored Malchus, probably became a servant of the living Savior Jesus Christ and was known by the community of that time. He who once was a servant of the high priest becomes a servant of the great high priest because he's been healed not just physically, spiritually. And he's called by name. But isn't that what Isaiah promises? But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. You and I have been healed by Jesus, the suffering servant that we too may find joy in serving him, the great high priest. And he calls us by name. And he promises us entrance into heaven. Because through him, we have been healed, we have been restored, we have been renewed, we have been saved. So as we call on his name, may we find joy in serving him. Amen.